recap from yesterday for those of you that were here. For those of you that weren't here, those of you that were here, you obviously know. Uh, so Paul, not a standard mid poke, down forward one sways what you got for your mid poke, you know? And uh, that on block into the back sway gives him plus three. So you could, uh, no actual frame traps there, but you could uh, down forward one on block into sway four. Where there's only a uh, two frame gap. Actually, a, uh, it's not two frame gap, I'm sorry. There's only a gap where you could get interrupted by 10 and 11 frame moves, which are all high. So you can mix that up with high crush. Uh, high crushing stuff like, you know, 3 2, or cancel to a sidestep, right? Shit like that. You have the most straightforward mid low mix up in the game with Demo Man, which you can mash in this game. You don't even have to time it like you had to in the older games. And you don't have to worry about the just frame version because it's only one more damage. It's not a big deal. I can't even get it now. Right? Whatever. And uh, Death Fist, right? The obvious mid option, right? Uh, against a good opponent that punishes Death Fist, you might want to just make Hop Kick your mid option because it's less punishable than Death Fist. And this easy ass combo will give you the same damage as Death Fist, right? You can get more damage than that, obviously, but still. So, uh, that's this most straightforward shit. Good 12 frame punisher in back 1 2. If the wall's to your left when you do back 1 2, you pick up with a demolition man for free. Uh, 4 4 2 1 is the move you use to train people to stay still. And you can mix it in the mid one now that it combos on normal hit. The mid one is unsafe, negative 12. The high is safe on block, but they could be duck. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and hammer of the gods. Forward plus 1 plus 2. Plus three on block, great move, counter hit, knocks down like that. Yeah, what else did I forget? 14 frame knee, that's a high. So that could be your 14 frame block punish as long as they're close. It gives you a juggle. You have to pick up with something like that. Uh, so yeah. Oh yeah, and on counter hit, sway four, gives you a juggle. You don't have to do that hard one, you could just do, uh, 82 damage. Oh yeah, up back two. Good homing move, you pick up the same way. Pretty much do the same juggle. So yeah. And, uh, back two one, great move with Oki, potential. I don't know, like... Where they have to hold back. If they don't hold back, that's guaranteed. And then when they do hold back, that's plus eight on block. Plus eight? Yeah, plus eight on block. All right. That was a short recap of what uh, I went through, like, most of this move list yesterday. I left off, I believe, at uh, back forward one. So to recap this one before I continue, back forward one gets you a free death fist. And it's a backswing blow. But you notice I only did 54 damage. That's because it did not count as a clean hit death fist. You have to time it. So it's a clean hit death is to get 70, was it? There you go. 70 damage instead of 54. Okay, for those of you that don't know what clean hit is, it means you're right up in their face, so you get a clean hit. If you're not up in their face, you don't get a clean hit. 20 less damage on this in this particular instance. Keep in mind, though, that that makes death fist safe because of the pushback. So when death fist is... Really rewarding, up close, it's super and safe because it's less pushback. You follow? So anyway, next one on the list. Backpack one plus two is the, is the uh, unblockable. We don't care about that really here. All right, so now we're going to go to his while standing moves. While standing, uh, what's up, Cornestra? Is the music too loud? If the music's too loud, let me know. I'll lower it. Uh, maybe I'll just lower it now just in case. It wasn't very loud yesterday. That's why I'm... Oh, it shouldn't be that loud. You guys let me know. It is very hype. I gotta keep myself hyped to go through these movements sometimes because I'm tired, especially from school and work. Anyway. So while standing to 16 frame launcher. As you can see, Tekken Bop says it up there. Uh, so if you block a uh, low that's 15 frames, you, you can punish with Hop Kick. So long as you're in range because Hop Kick range is a little shitty. But still, so you do have access to a 15 frame bootleg while standing Punisher with Hop. Keep that in mind. Either way, though, this will probably net you more damage. But the launch is kind of funny. Um, 
Does that turn him around? No, it doesn't. Just be... Yeah, see, I was, I was curious because um, sometimes you, you have some moves to turn around. Seems like that still works. If you want an easy combo, almost every launcher connects you down forward one into sway four. Run up, clean hit death fist. Make sure you run up and clean hit death fist, otherwise you don't get the good damage. For example, uh, if I could do it here. Say 52 damage versus 60. As long as you got the clean hit death fist. You got, woo, glorious. Who is this? Till I'm victorious. Conestra, good looking out, amiga. I appreciate it. <laughs> By the way, uh, did they confirm that your art is going to be DLC? Because yesterday when I loaded this game, I got a shitload of barrage of, of uh, art. Custom art with people's names in there. And then you said you were about to get shot out. So, did they accept your, uh, your uh, custom art? That's pretty cool. Oh, there it goes. Thank you very much for the 10 bucks. And follow Conesta's stream. Conesta streams the IRL drawing and uh, some Dragon Off play. Um, they probably aren't going to do more doses in the future, but they tried to slide you in. Oh, all right. All right. That's cool. That's good shit. That's good shit. Get your name out there. All right. Back to the uh, matter at hand here. So, uh, so, like I said, make sure you get the clean hit Death Fist. And then, because Death Fist does so much damage, you don't have to get too crazy to get decent damage for Paul. Remember, your average hot kick juggle is like in the mid-60s. He gets 60 off of that with no work. If you're new to Tekken, this is like the best, easiest way to get some simple-ass damage out of a juggle. And just to show you, this is the juggle that a scrub might tell you to use, right? <laughs> That played older seconds that that didn't adapt to the new scaling. 55 damage. You don't have to work that hard. Uh, and I, I fucked up there, but <laughs> not at all, right? The only way you get more damage than that is working in like core circle forward one jungles, which is like quite difficult, right? This is the hard part. See, that pickup is so hard. I drop it all the time. But that's the only way you're really gonna get more damage. And it's not going to be much more. See, I can't even get it consistently. But even then. Ooh, my one button's getting stuck. Seems like I'm going to have to replace it. It's stuck. Damn, that sucks. This stick is getting more and more fucked up. See how difficult this is? Oof. See, I added two damage doing that hard ass core super forward one. And I think it, it becomes like 64 damage if I land a shell trying to land earlier, which would be that same set, that same thing, but instead of death, is dash up into another one of these and then dash into a demolition man. Maybe uh, uh, 65 damage if you get the just frame demolition man. It's, it's a pain in the ass. So, anyway, so while standing two, you get the same shit. As long as you dash in, you get 67 damage easily, right? Um, so next we have his 13 frame Punisher, which is a pretty good one. While standing 3-2. Now this move is good in general. It's uh, First of all, it's really high damage for your thir for a 13 frame non-launching uh, while standing move. It's really good damage. Like a lot of other 13, 12 frame while standing moves tend to be in the low 30s to mid 20s, depending on the character. So 37 is on the higher end. But uh, even outside of a punish situation, that's a pretty decent move. Look. It's safe on block, negative nine, but it is mid-high, but you can delay it quite a bit, see? Like, a lot. Like, Sparrowjig caught me with this shit, with the most obvious setup in the world, but I expected him to just do it real fast, so I tried to duck him while standing him, and then because of the delay, I was standing right into that hook, the second hit. And the thing about that second hit is, on counter hit, it's a juggle starter. Same pickup, same as always. You can do the same shit for 72 damage. As a matter of fact, let me see if you do something even better. You might be able to cross circle back four. Nah. Do that though. Yeah. 
Basically, same as usual. If it was Kuma, you could have went right into quarter circle back four. You know how crazy the scaling is in this game? If you're able to launch someone, uh, launch someone, and instead of doing down forward one that, if you're able to just go right into that and then death this, it does more damage than adding the down forward one. Because Paul's single hits do so much damage. That adding this 13 damage move to your jungle to take up the scaling really fucks his damage up. Case in point, right? I'll show you an example right now. Oh, sorry, that's Connor here. So you hold back during this. Right? 67 damage. 67 damage. 69 damage. 69. Hey, yo. Here's another one. Hundred damage. That's more damage than if I were to do a typical full combo into a rage art. That's more damage. So anyway, while stand three two, good move. It is also a tailspin move. So anytime you pick up in a situation like that, you can do that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that would be his slide punish. I'm not a hundred percent, but I'm kind of sure. Maybe I should test that out later, right? But yeah, you land a 4-4-4, you can just go right into that and then death this. There. You can probably get more damage, like I said, but, you know, if you're new and you just want a placeholder, easy shit. You don't gotta get crazy. Alright. Anything in the chat? Dash up Demo Man is only a real mix-up in the corner or when someone is scared to move. I mean, at the wall. No, Dash up Demo... Let me see. Did you ask a question? Let me scroll up. Learn how to properly punish his death fist today, but I still can't see the demo man coming. Demo man is unseeable. Demo man is 15 frames. Startup. You have to guess. It's not seeable. Uh, who do you think are the top 10 Americans in Tekken? That's a random question. Uh, uh, I'd have to sit down and think. I can't give you a top 10 off the top of my head that fast, but I'll tell you that the people that are up there, like top five, is going to be like Anakin, Mr. Naps. Uh, I, I wish I could say Bronson, but he just doesn't play in tournaments, so... If he were to play consistently, Bronson would probably be up there, too. And, uh... Uh... I would put Speed Kicks above Peeling right now. I don't know if I would put him at, like, number number three or four, though. But speed Kicks is definitely up there. Uh... uh yeah, and it, it's kind of weird. I haven't been following tournaments enough to, to put anybody definitive beyond that. Like, because Peeling, I have a... I don't know if I would put him that high. He's just not that consistent because he does his stupid ling partying, right? So anyway. Uh, what am I missing here? Let's see. Any questions? Dash with Demo Man, blah, blah, blah. Now, Dash with Demo Man is a mix-up. It is a mix-up. Is there ever a reason to not cancel his supper? Uh, I don't think there is. I think I do think uh, I agree with Naughty Senpai where if it's going to close the round, why risk it? Why risk dropping the jungle? Just take the supper, right? Uh, but in general, I think his super does more damage, especially if you're using his super in a situation where you rage like you just got rage, and the super is gonna do shit damage. You cancel it. It's, I believe the first hit is always 20. I don't think it's ever higher than that. So you're gonna get that crazy damage either way, right? The 100 damage juggle I did earlier. Uh, so yeah, Demo Man is a mix-up. It is a mix-up. Dash up Demo Man is a mix-up. You just have to earn it by making the opponent scared. That's not the hardest thing in the world for Paul to do. He really punishes people that party pretty freaking hard. You know, whiffs. He punishes whiffs hard. He punishes... He hits like a truck. Like, everybody knows this about Paul. And, you know, I'm not surprising you with what I'm telling you that. You know, like, everybody knows. You have to, like... And if Paul gets you to keep still long enough, then Demo Man. Dash up Demo Man is fine. Just know that you have to... Pretty much, you should always dash up into it. Almost always. Because the range is shit, and you don't want that to happen. If that happens... Sorry. That happens, you might not get punished, but it, it makes like such a risky low so shitty. And if you if their back gets to the wall, they will launch punish you. Mid stage, they might not have the range. Uh, what I meant with not a real mix up is that people who can move rarely get clean hit by it and block the follow up. Yeah, as I said yesterday, if you sidestep to Paul's left, was it left? So, I step right. So, Paul's left was it, I think? Yeah, see? 
If you assassin the Paul's left, that's what happens. It doesn't get a clean hit. And it doesn't combo. Typically. Like, if I do it instantly off of a jab, it does. What if I put myself zero? Okay. What if I put myself, like, at negative one? See? I put myself at negative one. One side step left to my left, and he gets around it. it, it it's only comboing because it's set to, uh, uh, it's not set to stand, it's a guard. That's why it's, it's not. It's comboing. It doesn't combo in that situation. Unless it counter hits. Still, Demo Man is great. Especially, you know, you, you could dash up, sidestep left, and then do it to stop that kind of shit from happening. As long as you, or you just dash up and do it, because dash is going to realign. I'm not even getting the last hit for some reason. Fuck. Why am I not getting the last hit? Wow. I'm so used to trying to do the pattern, the rhythm. Uh, there it goes. 41, I got the. Anyway. So anyway, next on the list, while standing four, he pretty much has a standard generic while standing four. A lot of pushback, plus five on hit, negative six on block. By the way, while standing three by itself, it doesn't do anything special on counter hit. It's just a knee that gives plus three on hit and on counter hit. And the knee by itself is only negative eight, according to Attack and Bob. Also, let me test the tracking. I should probably do that. Uh, stand guard until the sidestep. Okay, that tracks. I'm putting myself at negative five, so that's a pretty good indicator. Okay, so it made me step. I wish I had a way to put myself at like. Oh, I know, I know how to do it actually. Negative two, that's better. Yeah, no tracking. Now let's go step. Okay, so while standing two, just track step, not walk. Okay. While standing three seems good. Ah, good. So while standing three covers both of your sides on step also. Oops. Good. While standing three tracks very well. Good to see. Alright. Um, while standing four, I don't think it's going to have any tracking. Alright, that's all I gotta see. While standing four has no tracking. Uh, a couple of while standing fours tend to have some tracking to one side. Paul's zero tracking. If you connect the cross jab, though, I'm sure. Yeah, see? If you connect the cross jab, they're not gonna sidestep anything. Um, let's test the while standing two. And while standing one is. Uh, Alright, so he has a 10 frame while standing move. This might be one of those while standing moves that's 10 frames up close, 11 frames far away. But typically, when you see that animation as a while standing move, that means up close it tends to be 10 frames. Which is a semi-rare thing, to have a 10 frame while standing move. So this is good. Especially after something, especially after something like this into that. It's not bad. Of course, there's no tracking. So if they were to sidestep, they'll blow you up. Yeah, so it's just a generic while standing one. Like, Brian has that as while standing 1 plus 2. I don't know if he still does, but he used to. Marduk used to have that as a while standing 1 plus 2 also. Fighting games. Resident Rammer only what's plus on block and out what's plus on hit or whatever. <laughs> That's okay. It's a long road ahead. Um, the reason plus on hit is plus in general is so important is because when you, when you start getting to, like, plus 7, for example, I know that you use Dragon off. Dragonov's 12 frame Punisher is 4-1. That leaves him at point blank, right in their face, with plus 7? No, plus 8 frame advantage. That means you cannot sidestep his 15 frame linear moves. Nobody is able to sidestep his back 4 in that situation, or down forward 1 in that situation. Spacing matters. If it's like plus 8 or plus 9 and it's like back here, 
then they'll be able to sidestep some stuff. For example, Josie's one two two, uh, the one Aris is using the ba ba and the elbow jab punish. That's plus nine, but it's like they're like this far apart. So the faint, you, they'll still be able to sidestep certain things, like her hop kick, I think, but maybe not her down forward two in either direction. Second is weird like that with the movement. It's not like Virtual Fighter where it's a binary thing. As long as you're safe on block, you can sidestep in Virtual Fighter. As long as it's not a trap. So anyway. Uh, next, we got Full Crouch down forward two. Ah, so he... From full crouch, she kind of has a bootleg version of forward forward two one mid, the mid version. But this one is super, super punishable if I'm not mistaken on block. That's no, it's not. It's negative twelve. I thought it was worse. I don't know if that's something that they changed or I thought wrong. Can he do the just frame? Wait, wait, wait. I feel like Aris went through this recently. You could do the just frame from that, right? You can! Aris did go through this recently, so it's the same. Okay, so full cross down forward two is the same as forward forward two. Good shit. Yeah, good shit. They changed it. Yeah, it's a change. So 14 frame. So he has a 14, a, a really good 14 frame, like crouch punisher, like low punisher. Right? I mean, 34. I mean, you know, while standing 32, I suppose it's still better. If you do the just frames, only gonna be 38 damage, right? Yeah, 38 damage versus 37. With a, they're both knocked down, so I suppose either one's okay. Just do do this because it's easier. It's only one less damage, and you won't fuck it up for less damage like, like that. Still, all right, that's interesting. Okay. All right. So next we got, and uh, we already know how the tracking works on that move uh, from before. So anyway, next we got full. Well, uh, the tracking tracks and blinks of pulse left. Let me uh. I step right, Paul's left. Yeah, see? It tracks the Paul's left. So, remember the trick I told you? It works for crouching, too. If I hold forward a bit, it's gonna track, see? If I hold down forward a bit. You see that little step? That little shuffle step? As long as you're holding forward and second, doing some sort of movement like this, you realign constantly while they move around you. To show, to show you that, like if I do this, and I do it, it whips, right? See, if I just hold down back, he's just looking at it, but he's slowly turning. But if I hit him with that low and I hold down forward, I'm turning with him. See? That's one of the ways to realign. So that includes while standing moves. If you just hold down forward for a little bit, you can make anything track. Even the most linear moves. For the linear, for the super linear moves, you might have to hold it a little longer than usual. The trade-off is you're delaying your input. So you open yourself up to mash when doing that. But just keep in mind that, that that's really more like higher level stuff. You, you need to know that going in when you're fighting better opponents. Opponents that move well. When you're fighting noobs, frame trap them. Even at the mid level, frame trap them all fucking day. And they're, they're just going to get hit by whatever. The most linear mix-ups ever. But at the, high, the higher level you get, the higher level opponent you fight against, the more important timing is for things like that. All right. Neek is better Oki too, but the full crouch wall spats further. Good point. And if you happen to hit him at the air with uh, the uh, just frame elbow, you, you'll get a full wall spat. I always seem to get hit but for free by his uh, forward somersault move. You need to sidestep that. Uh, if he's doing it on you for when you wake up, then block it. Just block it. FYI, the move on that, uh, the frame data on that move varies. If you look at the Tekken bot, right now at this range, it's negative one. If I try to get him at max range, plus two, I've gotten it as much as plus, what was it, six yesterday? It's plus six. See, when he blocked it right on his toe, plus six. So in a situation where you're getting up off the floor, there's a higher chance you're going to block the end of the move. Think like a meaty in a 2D fighting game, right? If you block the later frames of the move, there's going to be more frame advantage. Just block it, because if you get hit, it's a juggle. It is a juggle. That's four, 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 four. In a neutral situation, you could sidewalk this shit all day. The punish might get weird, though, because you you might end up with your back to him. Like, he might go past you. So right here, my dash up, back dash, back dash, back dash. I knew it, right? Yeah, 
<sighs> See? It's it's not a it's a pretty linear move. As long as you like as long as you're moving around a lot. This is like I said, punishing is gonna get weird. You might have to dash up and then do something. Like that. But anytime he knocks you down, like that, sorry, like this, if you're not holding back, if you hold back, I think it whiffs in that situation. But if you're not holding back, yeah, because the wake up backwards sucks. It doesn't, it doesn't keep holding back. Can't even wall standing. Oh my god, I can't wall standing because it's stick. The stick is fucked up. So like, Made me off of that. If I hold back, okay, see? You're forced. One way to get around that is you could tech and then block, like I said. If I tech. Oh, sorry, if I tech to, in this case, when I tech with kicks towards uh, Paul's right, it whips. When I tech uh, with punches towards Paul's left, my Paul, I have to block it. So that's one thing worth knowing for this setup. Here, if I hold back, though, he, uh, he catches me. Another thing, if I stay down and roll. That's another thing that uh, newer players tend to forget. When you hold down and tap punch, uh, you have to kind of delay it. If you mash it, you're gonna tech. You do that, you do that stay down grounded roll. Uh, you basically, if you delay, if you hold down for a bit and then let go of down and then press punches, you go the other way. Although in this case, I imagine they'll catch me if I try to do that. Yeah, same. Catch me. That's a very important thing to know. And the thing is, after you do that grounded roll like that, hold down. If you're not holding down, your character does the roll and gets up automatically. And that's a very vulnerable get up situation. You're gonna get hit by something. Before, it would have given a flow. I think they took away that flow from me. All right, so next, oh, here we go. This is one of the big noob killers right here. They made this unsafe in this game though. Uh, full crouch, down forward, one plus two. You guys do course circle forward. Uh, Close to the help us too? Can you do that? Uh, no, you can't. Right. The jungle starter. Let's do that. You can do better than that. 68 damage. Oh. <laughs> well, anyway, it's a super, super slow, low juggle starter. This is sealed. Demolition Man is not. This is 32 frames. You have to, just like you have to see Snake Edges, you gotta see this. Uh, I don't think this tracks either. Like, Snake Edges and moves like Snake Edge are homing. This is not. So, I don't think there's any real tracking here. Like,. Time to stand and then sidewalk. See? There's no tracking on this shit. That's why it's safer. It used to be safe on block. King has a similar move, but what is it called? Knee slicer? Uh, now they made them negative 12 on block, I believe. But you're going to want a low parry this. Or just crush it if you feel like you have that good enough reaction. Low parry requires less frames than crushing it, but still. I'd recommend low parry over blocking if possible. Especially as he has to go into crouch in the first place. King could do it instantly from standing if he input it like a uh, crouch dash one, I think. So anyway. See? No 13. So Paul's only gonna get a wall standing four. Or a wall standing one. So you're gonna want a low parry. You feel me? Forty-seven damage. Forty-two damage. Uh bad Steve. Those with hands should not be tournament legal. I don't know, I don't have a problem. Lows with hands. I guess I'm just kind of used to it. 
I mean, I get hit by Miguel's, but Miguel's is like one of those that's like edge case seeable, you know? It's hard to see unless you're really looking for it. Paul Snake Edge, not really. Uh, down back, back on wake up will make you vulnerable to mids and relaunches. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, Snake Edge doesn't have homing. I think they removed it because Core Circle Forward 1 plus 2 is Rage Drive. Oh, yeah. Paul used to be able to do it. Core Circle Forward 1 plus 2. I was right. I thought I was crazy. I was like, wasn't he used to. Here, you could input it like Core Circle Forward, you see, uh, to Down Forward. Well, without the Core Circle, just Down, Down Forward, and it'll come out. Yeah, see? You have to do it that way now if you want to do it instantly. So, like, kind of like the Dragon Off uh, while standing thing to avoid Core Circle Forward 4. You gotta do it that way. I mean, you know, this is something if you really want to be like scrub busting, you can throw it out there. If you're in a tournament like a Char Cup where it's fight to one, <laughs> feel free to test them once or twice with that. But I wouldn't, if you're like playing randomly just to get better, don't rely on these kinds of moves. That's my suggestion. Try not to rely too much on moves that are like, you know that the better people will, will, will fuck you up for using. That's my best suggestion to you. So do that stuff when you're in a tournament or you're like in a must-win situation. For whatever reason, you feel like you're in a must-win situation. Then go fucking balls to the fucking wall. But if you're just playing just to get better, trying to get better at matches of people, try to like, you know, do legit shit. You feel me? Uh, I feel like relying on gimmicky shit has hampered me quite a bit. Trust me on that one. Anyway, so if you hold down for 160 frames, you get this. And then he has a... If you uh, hold it again... What is it? Yeah, there it is. Uh, two charges, two charges. This is weird to input. You get that. <laughs> Incomplete moonsault. There's no use for this move unless you're just showing off. I think it's unblockable. You gotta do two charges, right? I think. Yeah, I think that's a blockable. I mean, uh, like a card. Maybe not. It would have said exclamation point if it were. Yeah, no. Super unsafe. By the way, if you get up face down, head towards like that, you can go instantly into a wall standing move. Which is what I just did there. Like if you, uh, third front, uh, third status, face down, right? If I tap up and punch, was it up and punch? You see how you get up? Up and one. You go right into a wall standing moves. <laughs> you can do it all. Not all while standing moves are oddly enough. I think it's only kicks. It might only be kicks. Yeah, it might only be kicks. I thought it was punches, but it's kind of weird. Yeah, it's not letting me do punches, but kicks you can do. I don't know why. I, 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 you know, that's one of those things that you see link players do a lot because their wall standing four is so good. Uh, you got a tip on how to get Hammer the Gods for a floor break in the combo if I have to dash up? I often end up with this kind of... Hammer the Gods floor breaks? Didn't I test that last time and it didn't floor break for me? Are you sure of floor breaks? Alright, it looks like it should. Dash up into neutral? Maybe the dragon on trick works. It do. Input it as while running one plus two. See? Input it as while running one plus two. Let's see. Let's do a long combo. Ugh. What can I do there? Uh, random ass long combo, right? No, I got, I'll do four hits, I guess, then. Yep. And put it as while running one plus two. There you go. Hope that helps. Uh, Dan, there's two parts to learning Death Fist. Uh, two parts? What do you mean by two parts? <laughs> Another thing my Green Rack is struggling with is Paul's wall pressure. The Demo Man into relaunch, and then the Somersault that I cannot roll out of in some corners. 
so I end up getting relaunched on Waco. Maybe that scenario is just unavoidable. It's a fifth, uh, uh, look, any situation where you get up, when you, especially when you're at the wall, you're probably gonna get up with a tech, right? One of these two. You're probably gonna get up like that, right? What that means is you, as long as your opponent isn't trying to do gimmicky shit and they're ready for you to get up that way, they could force a 50-50 on you because you're going to be unable to sidestep. Look, you can make the, uh, I can make this Paul get up into, he's gonna get, he's gonna attack left, right? So I can make him get up left into a sidewalk left, right? Now, I could do any linear shit in the world as long as I time it right and I know you're gonna get up that way and it's gonna hit you trying to sidestep. That includes Devil Man. That includes Death Fists. That includes anything I fucking want. That's just my reward for knocking you down and and guessing right on you getting up that way. Now you are invincible during that get up. Like if I try to do it too early, um, that was too uh, that was too late. If I try to do it too early. See, you went right through it. That's how attacking works in this game. Of course, there's ways to stop your opponent from attacking. Basically, think about it this way. If you're coming from a 2D fighter, let's just say Street Fighter V, you have quick recovery, right? Quick recovery, technically, these are the quick recovery options. But then, just like in Street Fighter, there's hard knockdowns. Hard knockdowns remove all of these get-up options right here. Well, not random, but <laughs> these four. Back quick row, quick recovery, side row, whatever, whatever, all this shit, right? So, for example, I have this on, right? So he's like, oh, I'm gonna get up that way, right? I'm gonna tech, right? What can I do for fall? That doesn't, uh, let's say I jump jab. That spikes. That's what we call a spike. Now there's a new kind of spike. And that's this shit. And that's a new kind, that's a new mechanic in Tekken 7 where you have to hold back, otherwise your opponent gets a free guaranteed hit. Which Rob talked about before with this setup, right? You dig? Yeah, now I'm playing my own music. <laughs> I'm glad I can help. Uh, so yeah, Naughty Senpai, remember. Uh, uh, input it as while running plus one plus two, you'll get it no problem. And if you have trouble doing one plus twos, like you do running into one two, Hold the one while you're holding the one while running two. Don't do that. That's a mistake. <laughs> uh, okay. So I got the dumb gimmicky, jokey, incomplete moonsault move out the way. Otherwise, if you just do this charge by accident, keep in mind you will be key charged, which means you cannot block. So don't hold down for too long when you're playing as Paul. That's what happens. Next, we have a move that I've been neglecting. Sidestep one. This is a pretty good move. It is a high. This is plus eight though on block. Plus eight with some pushback here. Like that. Why not that, the tip of Jabbering so they'll be able to sidestep that. So this is a good example of what I was talking about earlier. He's close enough still that I can make linear moves as long as he have the range. I can make linear moves track here. Watch. If I make him guard that and try to sidestep, I think my four will connect either way. Right? See, sidestep. If I'm at plus eight, not, no matter which way he goes. But if I jab into that, Nothing, right? Same thing. If you go the other way, nothing. How about uh, plus three? Plus three. So, oh yeah, to go over this again. This is plus three, but it forces crouch. That means your opponent is only able to sidestep instantly towards the background. Now, keep in mind that when you're playing online, I, I mentioned this yesterday, I'm gonna mention it again. When you're playing online, you're able to select your side. So even though, like, if I were fighting this other Paul, this two-player Paul online right now, and I see myself on the one-piece side and he's on the two-piece side, on his end, he could be on the one-piece side. So that fucks with this a bit. But if you're playing locally, you you already know, oh, he's on two-piece side. When he blocks this and I'm at plus three, he's only instantly able to sidestep up towards the background. Because what happens is, if I have him record doing that to me, I can't sidestep down, because I'm recovering crouched. I would have to crouch cancel. See? To go down, but I can instantly go up. See? The moment I recover from that, I could go up. Ugh. The moment I recover from that, I, if I'm not sucking, I could go up instantly. That's how it works in a second. 
So when you start when you start to take the, that into consideration when when you uh, force the opponent crouching, they're not able to instantly do standing moves. So that includes armor moves. That includes supers. If you were playing Tekken Revolution, that include invincible moves. Force crouch is valid. It's a viable mechanic to know, especially when you're plus on block. That means that they can instantly only do while standing moves. So if you know which way their while standing moves track. You could sidestep freely. Unless you're dragging off, you do down two, it forces your opponent crouching, but it forces you as dragging off to crouch. So you have to down two, sidestep up. Down two, sidestep up. If you're on one piece side, that means you're going left. If you're on two piece side, that means you're going right. You follow? Armor moves, that, oh, oh Conestra, that's not just armor moves. You thought that was armor? No, that's not just armor moves. You want to you want to see what else that includes? Oh, uh. Right. Can't armor through that. Can't super. Cannot super. The only thing that will will we'll, we'll go through it is a uh, dragon punch, uh, ex dragon punch. From uh, Akuma and Eliza, they are uh, invincible on frame one. So keep that in mind too. If you're worried about Slipper and your Paul, have them block this, and then you're free to do like uh, up to 12 frames. Of course, that takes away mids, unless you want to super risky in the shoulder. But you know, that is why in situations like Josie. When she goes to the switch stance, any of her switch stance transitions on block, and she does the one, is it one to one, the spinning, the overhead, the, the high back, she turns backwards and, you know, swings backwards with the backhand. You cannot armor that, you cannot slip for that. Too many plus frames. Uh, Alright, so side step one seems like a pretty good move. Just a regular ass knockdown on normal and on counter. Oh, on counter hit is a juggle starter. Ooh. Uh, it is an instant tail spin, though, it looks like. Let me put that on. I know this. This is interesting. It's instant tail spin, right? Yeah, that's instant tail spin. There's only one way to follow this up. <laughs> so there you go. Um, I mean, you could probably get, maybe get more damage than something like this, right? I don't know. That's, no, that jab fucks it up. It wasn't. It was 60 what? 69. 69. Haha. Haha. 69. You're supposed to be able to catch more than one elbow. I don't know. I don't know if you can. Whatever. You get a wall carry out of this if you want. Yeah, dash out is so much harder than it used to be. Let's see if you get a wall carry out of this. Maybe three jabs. Yeah, three jabs. Maybe four, but. You could jab, jab, jab. As long as you get the just frame one in the end, that does the kind of knockback during a juggle that gives you a good wall splash so you can run up in Death Fist or whatever. Instead of just like floating them into the wall. You get what I'm saying? Like Dragon House 2 1, two, one 3 does that too. Alright. So sidestep one seems like a good move. I don't know how the tracking will work on this because it's a sidestep move. That means it's going to inherently like track. You know what I'm saying? Because you're sidestepping to realign. Um, yeah, so, walk. So there's no actual tracking built into it. Yeah, there's no actual tracking built into it. But as long as you realign properly, you'll hit them for moving. So the size around that is all about timing. All about timing. Alright, next, sidestep three. This is another good low. So I talked about also uh, a bit about how Paul's poking, low poking is a little weird. So like back four would be like his standard poke when he's face to face with you. 
but it's 20 frames, so it's on the slow side. And then he has sidestep three, which is plus four. Back four is plus three. Sidestep three is plus four. On counter hit, however, he gets a free, uh, uh, as long as you're aligned, sorry. When you hit him at a weird angle like that, and the side, you don't get it. But if you hit him, like, fairly on axis, you get that knockdown, and it gives you a free shoulder. It gives you plus 12. Sidestep three, which is perfect for a shoulder. So oh, if you ever use that sidestep three, be ready to catch that animation. Like every time you use high step three, you should hold one of the punch buttons. And then if you confirm the counter hit, you hold the punch button down and down plus the other punch button while you're holding it. Because of the, because of the uh, you know the buffering trick in second. Does the rage drive button change the force cross situation at all? Interesting question. Uh, I doubt it. Let's see. He got up first. He did get up first. Like if you look, see, he got up first and then did it. So I guess the rage drop button makes it so you crouch cancel with minimal frames and do it. Cause I could do that. See, I could do that manually. I don't need a rage drop button to do that. So like if he were to put me in a plus three. And let's say down forward one after plus three. Right. Okay. That makes it much easier to do, but I could do that without that button, I think. Yeah, see? Matter of fact, all it takes is me not holding. All it takes is me timing the one plus two. All I said is you cannot do it instantly from crouching. As long as there's a cro enough frames to crouch cancel, you could totally uh, get around that. So you still gotta like keep your frames tight. I would say maybe a jab in that situation. No, what are you doing? And a cross catch, I think minimum uh, two frames. That's two frames. All right. So side step three, good low poke. It is negative twelve. What is this playlist? It's good shit. It is uh, all Final Fantasy fourteen music. I could link it here. How do I link my playlist? If I know how to link my playlist, let me see. Um, I don't know how to link my playlist. Sorry. It's in my channel, though. My YouTube channel. If you scroll down, you see my YouTube channel. I have my VGM playlist. This is VGM playlist number six. How do I link my playlist? Is this it? Copy. Maybe this is it. Yeah, try that link. Uh, this is one of the raid bosses in FF14. Alexander, if you remember the Alexander summon, the castle, the building. The raid boss in there plays this music. Well, there's four different versions, but this is one of them. Reminds me of Electric Light Orchestra. All right, so anyway, negative, uh, what is it, negative 13 is what I said? No, negative 12 is what it says here. All right, so we got, yeah, negative 12. So you're not going to get launched for this unless you get low parry, right? So good luck. What's back four again? Back four, on the other hand, is negative 13. So a couple of characters can launch that. I think I went through this yesterday. Eddie can launch that because he's standing. So his 13 frame while standing launchers are high. So he'll launch you for this. Obviously, uh, fucking bitch made Kazuya will launch you. Josie will launch you if all standing 2 1. So maybe, maybe I guess in those matchups, go with side step 3 over back 4 if you want to go for a low poke. Next, we got his unique grounded move. Not much to say about it other than the fact it's down two when the opponent is grounded. Uh, it does have one good thing. It's plus on hit, plus four on hit if they were to get up into it. And if they were to get up and block it, it's only negative 12. Not as good as Dragon Ball Stomp, which is negative 11. But still, you're not going to get lost if they block it. So it's... Uh, this shit. So if you, were to, if you were to go for a situation where they could get up, 
and they were to block it, you wouldn't get launched. So, that's good. Otherwise, it works like any other one of those unique moves that only work when the opponent's ground, like a stomp, you know? Like a lot of stomps. So if you think your opponent's staying down and you're right up on top of them, feel free to throw out it down too. It's not the worst thing in the world. Alright. Next on the list. Uh, quarter circle forward. So we got the uh, cross dash stuff, right? Mm, feeling good about this back dash cancel on the sway character. But, uh, right when I say that, I fuck it up. All right. So anyway, core circle forward one. This is what I've been using in juggles. It's a solid damage launcher. It is only negative four on block. Uh, I don't know if ha it has any tracking built in. I would have to put a sidewall to test. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like there is some tracking because I hit him at a weird angle. Oh, okay. So it's one of those where you have to delay the input a bit, course it forward, and then delay your one. By the way, a thing about, or a thing I should explain about uh, sway moves or, or and course it forward moves, anything of these, any of these movements that count as some sort of unique stance, there's a big window where you can press the button. You see, that's a course it forward. You do that. During that whole animation, if I press 2, it's going to be a death fist. I can do it instantly, like a fireball, or I can do a circle forward, and then wait, and then 2. And you can still get death fist. Just bam, bam. Well, as long as you're pressing the button during that animation, you're going to get the move. That includes course circle forward 1, which means you could delay it to add tracking. You could do it later to add, tra to add some bootleg realigning to the move. I think uh, for, he, he does while standing four out of it. If you do course circle forward four, he does the generic while standing four out of it. Course circle forward three is a unique load, so you can't. You're not gonna really get that. You could delay that though. You're not gonna really gonna get the while standing three. All right. Course circle forward one. No inherent launching. Uh, sorry, no inherent tracking. <laughs> Be ready for that kind of shit happening though. Convert. Also, because it's a crash dash, it could actually, depending on how you input it, it goes under highs. Like I used to see Paul players like to do two of these back to back to test you if you try to jab after it. Uh, see if I can do this. Yeah, so I, if I, I feel like if I had inputted that a little bit better, he would crush the jab. Yeah, it seems like if I do it instantly, all right. but if I do it a little slow, it goes under. Point being, it's only negative four. I don't know if it's as good at ducking jabs as it used to be. Maybe I'm just not inputting it perfectly, like right when he recovers. But it's a good move. This is one of those. It's like, you know, he's got a lot of safe on block shit. It's kind of crazy. He's got a lot of high reward safe on block stuff. Or plus on block. That's just another one of those. Next, we got Death Fists. Uh, there's not much to say about Death Fist. If you're up close, you get 60 damage. It's negative 17 either way. If you're not up close, you get 40 damage. If you counter hit and you're up close, it does a fucking 72 damage. If you counter hit you far away, it just doesn't add the clean hit, so it's 48 damage. So, how safe do you want to make it? Well, depends on the range, right? How would I punish this as Paul? Uh, course of one, maybe? How fast is course of forward one? 16 frames, so if I'm like really good, I could get that to punish. <laughs> That's really hard to do. It's not happening. There you go. Um, Dragonov could punish this with forward plus one plus two, but not from this range. Yeah. 
shoulder. So I can hear, this would be an easy way to show this off, actually, now I think about it. Shoulder, right? But from here, no shoulder. Easy, simple, right? Straightforward. Up close, you gotta go to punish. Far away, you don't. Up close, you get more damage. Far away, you don't. Easy, easy to understand. Next, we got core circle forward three, which is the low. On counter hit, the slow. It's zero on on regular hit, and on counter hit, and knocks down. I don't know if he gets a full juggle. I never tried. You guys demo, man. I think that's uh, doesn't work on Jack. Though. while standing three. Nope. Here's one thing I know he gets, but I don't know if it works on everyone. I I've done this on Kuma, that's why I don't think it's gonna work. Oops. Yeah, that works on Kuma. So pretty much just this demo man if you get a counter hit on this. Fifty damage, not bad. If it wasn't the just frame, it would have been forty-nine. That's good. King can do forward two one, down plus three plus four, any distance. Lucky king. But you prefer a launch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, king 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 got the hookup. That forward two one is such a good buff for king. Forward two one, armor king forward two one. Anyway. Oh, I forgot about Core Circle 4 3 4, this knee. Isn't this, uh, what, how much damage is this? 30 damage? No guarantee follow-ups, huh? Let's try it one more time. Nope. That's a reset. I can check out of that. All right, so this needs a counter hit drill starter, I think, right? Yeah, sure is. A high damage one at that. <laughs> Oof, can he convert off of that? Does he get anything? Maybe not. Oh, it's the same thing. Okay, it's the same thing. I don't think he gets anything. Maybe he doesn't. Quite difficult. That's a reset. Yeah, that's a reset. one if you're really good. Is there like a single hit I could get? Shoulder maybe? Huh? Well, yeah. What is this on block? Negative nine on block. 
Yeah, I don't know how good this move is. I mean, it's good damage if you hit it, but it's not a juggle. Like, if it was like a proper juggle starter, it'd be worth doing. It is safe on block, and it is a knee. You know where I would use this? If you're fighting against an Asuka that likes to counter when her back is to the wall. Wall splat with this. <laughs> nah, but even then, you get more damage by wall splatting with instant while standing three too, right? Oh, that wouldn't wall splat. No, yeah, it would wall splat. Yeah. And that's a knee also, because uh, Asuka's generic counter doesn't count their knees. Generic counters do not count their knees, do not count their head busts, do not count their elbows. 4 4 2 1 also. Yeah, so fuck that. I won't even use it for that. Maybe as a wall carry, right? In a situation like this, and they need a wall, you wanna do that? No, that doesn't even wall carry wall. You just, just do fucking uh, that, right? But, yeah. Not a fan of this move. Maybe there's a way to fit it into a combo that I don't know. I don't know about. Uh, that's it. That's it for core circle forward. Um, so next we got backsway. So I kind of went over the backsway move when I was talking uh, backsway moves. I was talking about down forward one into it. So keep in mind that backsway you can go into it with down forward one back, hold back. And when when you press a button as fast as possible, that's plus three out of down forward one. So for example, backsway four and backsway two, those are both 15 frames. Those are the two fastest moves he has out of backsway. So down forward one into that, and down forward one into two uh, can only be interrupted by 10 and 11 frame moves. In the case of, of uh, backsway four, if you exchange for the 12 frame move, as long as it doesn't knock you down, that's in your favor because on counter hit, that's a juggle starter. That also happens to be plus three on block. This. So this into this, you could like kind of do in the, another one right after, you know? Or just do this into this and then that. That's a frame trap, standing four, magic four. All right. Or even down forward too, because in that instance, if the counter hits it'll launch, but they'll be able to back dash so you gotta be careful. Because down forward two's range sucks. So now that we got that out of the way, quarter circle back one. So this is zero on block that I, this I learned yesterday, which makes me want to use it a little more. It's 21 frame startup, and it's a counter hit juggle starter. It also spikes. So down forward one into back sway one, that could floor break. Um, it's 24 damage, it knocks out a normal hit on counter hit, bounces, right? Oh, another instance of you being able to do uh, instant core circle back four, I think. If you're sharp. 77 damage. 75 damage. Funny how that works, right? Of course, you can just, like, if you don't want to get greedy for about that two damage, just do the easy down forward one into it. Like, it easy on yourself. Uh, so, yeah. We could test the tracking on this stuff using this, and I already did last time, and I already know that's linear as hell. Uh, so is, uh, well, not, not, that, not so much that, but the hammer is. Right? So next we got backsway two, which only tracks to his right side. So if you go left, I tested this yesterday. If you go to uh, your right, if you go to Paul's left, your right side step, you can get around both of the mids. Keep that in mind. Uh, the two is just a way to have a fast mid, but it is safe on block. That's what's good about it. So, negative eight with pushback. So, I would recommend instead of sidestepping if they block this, back dash. Try to back dash. If they do anything remotely slow, they're gonna whiff. And if you're ready for that, maybe you could, maybe, you know? Or just shoulder. I would say shoulder over death fist. Prepare for a shoulder. Every time you back dash for Paul with the intent of making something whiff, keep your eye on the shoulder. Because you need range. When you're up close and you sidestepping, you think someone's gonna whiff, look for a hop kick. 
Or a down forward two. If you want to play it safer, I guess. Alright. So anyway, uh, quarter circle back three. Here we go. Another noob killer, but it's still a good move at, at uh, any level. So quarter circle f uh, back th three has a built-in string. Quarter circle back three, two. That's the only second hit extension. Low mid. And then three, two, one for that string. That ends with a high that looks like a mid. I swear to God, when he gave this in second six, it was a nightmare because I thought it was a mid. I was so scared of this fucking move. And then eventually I learned that, oh, that's a high? You're telling me when he swings from downward to upward, that's a fucking high? Okay. That makes no visual sense, but that's what it is. And then, of course, we'll go back three, two, three. Now he could delay the third hit, regardless of which one it is quite a bit. See? Ba ba wait. Ba ba ba. Listen to the cadence. Ba ba ba. That's how much I'm delaying it. Ba ba ba. You can literally swing it way after you swing the second hit. Ba ba ba. Now that's important because if I end at the second hit, it's negative ten. Right? So they could jab punish it. But if I just commit to the third hit right away, they cannot jab punish it. The high is negative nine with a ton of pushback. Right? So once again, backdash. And the low on block is negative uh, 13. So some characters can launch that. Most people will tend to low parry it, though. So there is no built-in mix-up, but there is a hesitation mix-up, let's call it. Right? Because of the delay. And the low on counter hit... Oh, supercharge. Gives you a guaranteed down back two. You might have to dash up for it, though. Anakin made, uh, used this a great effect by delaying the low. And it was catching people like crazy in tournament. Aris was, born, was restreaming that tournament. I don't think you get anything better than that. Yeah, see, because any, anything is going to hit him around it. Like, yeah, see, and that has no range. So dash up into down back two. That's what you're going to want to do. That's guaranteed. 34 damage. If the low just hits them on regular hit, it's uh, zero. Even on hit. 15 damage. Nothing special. So the one thing I didn't check is if they don't, if he doesn't delay it, maybe I did check it, I just don't remember. If he does delay it, I don't know if it tracks. By the way, the low into a mid is not a natural combo on normal hit. Okay, you cannot sidestep the high. And you can't sidestep the low. There's no sidestepping this at all. So another thing about this is if the low counter hits, it does the knockdown. So regardless of which ender you use, it's going to combo. It's just going to combo as like a jump. Like a shitty damage juggle. I don't think he could convert if he just do the two hits. Okay? No, because then that happens. And then that happens. Yeah, no. You pretty much only get the string if you do that. And you could counter hit confirm because of the knockdown and the sound effect that counter hits do now. You pretty much have to commit to the first two hits. You can't wait until the first hit connects and then hit two. But by the time that second hit connects, you already know, oh, I'm going to finish the, the last hit. By the way, if that this happens, you can commit to the third, uh, the low. I don't know. I don't think you can commit to the high. Maybe you can. I don't know. I don't know. Let me not confirm that. Not duck it, so you can totally commit to the high if that happens. If you get the rear, and you're ready for that, even if it doesn't knock him down. And in that instance, it does 59 damage instead of the the counter hit situation where 
it, it counts as a juggle, so it's scale. See? 42 damage. Okay. Next. Oh, we're almost done. Of course, I go back four. So I talked about this already. 15 frame high homing move that is plus three on block. And Starks juggles on counter hits. Okay. If you, if you, this is probably the easiest instance of floating with the core circle forward one afterwards. Like it's hard as hell to do off of like a hop kick and shit. But off of, the, off of this on counter hit, way more time to do it. If you still don't feel comfortable with that, just go right into the usual. The usual. Feel me? You still get 80 damage. You still get 80 fucking damage. Uh, one more th note about this move, and I'll get back to it in a second after I go through the last sway move, which is core circle back one plus two. This is what you do if you want a normal hit launcher at a back sway that crushes highs, uh, but it's actually unsafe on block. This is negative 14 on block. It does hit mid though. I'll show you guys. I don't think it tracks. So you, you know, you want to go into that. Especially if you think people are going to jab you and you want to do it. This is basically the hard read to count the jabs. See? But on block. Uh, on block. That's it. Negative 14. Keep that in mind. Alright. I, I said I don't think it tracks, right? Let me check that. The track step. Oof. Okay. So you, uh, Okay, so you have to sidewalk to your right to consistently get around this. be enough to get the tank on the, on the side. I love it. It works no matter what access, pretty much. Alright. So that's pretty much his move list, uh, outside the grabs. But before I get to the grabs, I might as well show the core circle back four shit again on the big boys. I did it on Kuma yesterday. This time I will do it on... Uh, Let's see if it works on Jack. To the king of all Phoenix. Where the hell is he? Everybody hates Jack, so let's fuck Jack up. Jack, seven. Jack is always a weird body motherfucker. Even though he's big, he falls out of like things weirdly. Like more this used to think be a thing with Marduk too. At least I've been told this much. I've never really seen it too much. But oh yeah, one good example is in DR. Jin's Crouch Dash 4. The only thing he got guaranteed outside of some unique instances was a Savage Sword, down back 2 2 3. That didn't work on Marduk. So Jin had to do Crouch Dash 4 with the built in follow up on Marduk. It was kind of funny, actually. Now he has like a little mini juggle out of it. So, first of all, I think I saw that this fucked up on Sparrow Jin, was it? The pickup off of this. Okay, no, it does still work. I guess Sparrow Jin just messed up his timing. Alright, um... So let's see. I think it I think it works on Jack. Woo! There's the 82 damage. Beautiful. Beautiful. Fucking beautiful. See that shit? So you don't even need to, you need to do this to get the 82 damage. You could just do two of them back to back on Jack and Kuma. And uh, Gigas. That's what I wanted to show. That whiffs on any other size character. If you go with the course and go back for you can totally run up and input it as a Tatsu, by the way. If you just want to run up and go for a homing move. And, ugh. Okay. Totally dash up into that shit. Alright. Go, let's look through his grabs. He has quite a few.
Oh. Well, I'm gonna have to reload the game because it just crashed on me. You don't see the window though. <laughs> so let me reload. The game was like, sorry, you can't see Paul's move list. It's banned. That's cheating. Alright, let's see. Is my uh, OBS picking it up? Looks like it is. The King of Iron, Paul Phoenix. Paul Phoenix. like that that makes me worried about like when I stream I haven't streamed actually playing against other people in a second in a while but that's the kind of shit that makes me not want to use the PC version I don't know it's been getting worse and worse for me I don't know why I have trouble getting good frame rate like I got decent frame rate but not one that like you know it dips into the red a bit too much for my liking <sighs> okay Let's have a look, see how this 10 hits real quick. He has one of those fake 10 hit combos that's really only 5 hits. Dragon has some of those too. So on hit number 8, low parry. He has a bunch of highs in there anyway, but. So if you see the hammer fist, you can only go low. The hammer fist is the giveaway. If you don't see the hammer fist, wait for the low on the eighth hit. Ha! Huh. Take that back. <laughs> So if he hits you with that low, the next two hits are guaranteed. There you go. It's him, uh, fuzzy. Fuzzy. Fuzzy, fuzzy. Fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy. Low parry and then stand after a bit. See? Negative 28, by the way. Alright, so there's no mix up there. Some low level shit. He might be able to charge the last hit of that, I forget. Well, even if he does, he won't be able to charge the low. Nope, he can't. He can only charge down one, too. Negative 28 either way. Alright, so now we go over the throw. Let's see. This is the classic. Looks like it gives good uh, a good situation. I don't know how his recovery is though. A good positioning, I should say. For Oki. This is the one that throws him away, right? Yep. And you're on the floor. So the Oki on that's a little funky. Like I don't think you really get any Oki. Dragon screw. That looks like it gives a little bit of a 
Chest punch, chest thrust. Yep, Loki there, but besides a flying 40 damage toward the wall. Also, I don't know if this counts as a actual command grab. Classic. Ah, this is a hard to do one right here. I think it's even if you get it, yeah, you have to like just frame it. Otherwise, they block it. So, this wall splats for a full wall combo if you're good at it. Otherwise, you get launched. This is one of those you want to watch if you really want to use this. I don't think anybody really uses it, but you have to like watch the, the, the game explain. Like this. Alright. He has a one brick command grab. Good for him. This is the one he used to wall splat. If the opponent breaks this throw with their back to the wall, you splat into the wall face first. Ultimate tackle. And of course, anytime you get ultimate tackle, he has this shit. Oh wait. Ultimate punish. Yeah, this one. This does a fucking ton of damage. Ugh, 61 damage. Yeah, he's uh, most characters have that, not all. You know what's cool about Paul? Well, a lot of things are cool about Paul, but Marduk, his running tackle, Paul was one of the characters that I think he might be the only character that had a unique break animation for the tackle. Like Marty would do a running like burn like a Goldberg takedown. So every other character that breaks it, they like just turn sideways. Paul, he actually what do you call it sprawls for for you know for you people that watch MMA or watch wrestling, real wrestling, uh, um, where he basically uh, push the the back of the head down and then he like <laughs> leads leads his legs back. He like bridges his legs and pushes down. It looks, yeah, it was really cool. Cause Paul's a gra you know, judo grappling. While the other characters had a generic break animation for that tackle. Uh, so all right, let's see. Chest crusher. Is this an actual command grab? Is my is what I'm wondering about. Yep. So Paul has a unique break for every uh, button. One, two, and one plus two. You have to break that with two. Try to break it with one. So that's a uh, that's just a generic two plus four grab, and then you press back right after. And then. What's it called? Foot throw, foot launch. That's a one break, right? So that you have to break one. The generic break animation. So watch the hands. Watch the hands. It's one of those that you could test. And then you work in a one plus two throw. If you want to break uh practice throw breaking. It's been a while since I've done this. I, I, 
press it as two tilde one instead of one plus, one plus two. I hate when I do that. My fingers are like really bad at this. Maybe I should button bind. This is how you practice throw breaking, and then eventually you want to switch sides, which is good that he has to throw does that for you. One more thing about Paul that I just remembered. Enough of, enough of that, right? <laughs> you get stuck in that vortex for a while, but you people that are bad at throw breaking, you don't want to do that. So let me tell you something right now. If you ever run into my gigas online and you don't know how to break throws, ooh, lordy. Oh, man. Pitbull your ass into the wall and it's going to hurt. Uh, player wants to be on the floor. Face up. So Paul, I don't think he has spring kick, does he? No, he doesn't. He's one of the characters that doesn't have spring kick. So right here, face up, feet towards. If you press three plus four, you get the guard break dive roll. When you see that, when you see that dive roll happen, when they do that kick up animation first and then into it, it means they break your guard. So if I jab after this, you get a float, Un unblockable. It has to be jab though. The dig. He might be able to charge on us doing something before. So Paul does not have a generic spring kick, I guess. Does he? Oops, spring attack. Yeah, he doesn't. Interesting. So when you see that kick-up animation, it's so important for you to like sidestep, sidewalk around it, sidewalk and then chase after them. That's how you punish that. Keep in mind, Gigas is one of these two. I don't, I don't know if Jack has this, but Gigas is also unable to um, get up with a spring kick. He does that instead. So on reaction, you have to be ready. You have to be ready to see that. And on reaction, don't guess, see it. So anyway, back to the throws. So now, throws are all hard knockdown, basically. None of these options are available when you throw an opponent. So every time I've done this with a past character, you start with the wake-up kicks. You see what options you have for wake that, that will beat up wake-up kicks. If, if available, you want to see if you have a mid that hits grounded. Not everyone has that. We already know that Paul's down back two does that, amongst other stuff. Um, so we don't have to worry about these options for throws. You have to worry about this. So the first thing we're going to test is wake up kick. Right? So let's see. Let's see. Regular. Let's just beat a wake up kick. It does. And on counter hit, so you get a launch. Let's beat a wake up mid. Oop. Oh, not wake up mid. That's, a, that's not a big deal. You'd rather beat be a wake up low than wake up mid because the thing about wake up low. I thought wake up mid is slower. Maybe not in that in that situation. So the thing about wake up low is on counter hit there are juggle starters. There's only one instance where it's a juggle starter on normal hit, and that's face down, feet towards. This situation. If that clean hits you, that low, that's a juggle starter. Only in that situation. So that it, while that is a dominant situation for you if you're standing, for Oki, you ha always have to remember that the low wake up kick is the most dangerous in that situation also. And everybody has access to that. I don't think there's any character in the game that is unable to do that. Keep that in mind. It is also a large punishment on block, but people tend to low parry. So yeah. So that doesn't work. Let's see what mids I can uh, hit him with. Okay, so. Uh, uh, 
You don't even get the down suit. You know. How about love? So your Oki in this is actually kind of whatever. Okay, generic, down back four. Demo man. Very risky, but. Because they could get up and, lo and block it low. But that's an option. I would say down back four should be a low, because I think that hits ground. No, it doesn't. Ugh. Yeah, the Oki off of this kind of sucks. Sidestep, you could block. It is negative 14 after all, but it's the range might not be great, right? If you block, whoops. Yeah, range is not good. Or you could just sidestep. Low tracks, but it has that bootleg ass animation. It's the slowest one. In that positioning only is that slow. It's not even dirty. The Loki off of that throws is shitty. Alright, um, how about this? That's what I like to see. This is down forward one plus two. That's what I like to see. We beat out both wake up kicks. Next. After you verify, you gotta move that B-type of wicker kicks. In this case, it's a mid-edge grounded, right? We test against these two. Side roll left and side roll right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to mash it, but I crouch when I mash it. Okay, looking good for that one. Side roll right. We're looking like we got a good option here. So next would be to test against this, but this, when the AI does it, they just tap back to wake up backwards. They don't hold back. And when you hold back, you actually create more space. So to test this option, you gotta record it on yourself and just hold back. I'm giving you guys like a rundown on how to test your move okay. I think I did a video on this on my YouTube. So the big question is, does it make it whiff? That's what I want. And it doesn't. Good. It's uh, safe on, it's like, well, it's not safe on block, but it's like 10. But a lot of characters can't punish it, see? So uh, Gigas will be able to punish that. So this is a great option. Now we need a low option that covers all of that shit too, preferably. Preferably at least the low. Uh, but in this case, I think the low is faster than the mid. Wake up kick. Uh, but the big thing we wanted to cover is wake up backwards. That's what we, we wanted to cover. We wanted to reach. Uh, back four, maybe? Back four has, like, shit range. Let's try it. All right. I know that hits grounded. So, it thrusts my low wake up kick. It thrusts my mid wake up kick. Side roll. Side roll. There you go. I always put it on the YouTube, B Chang. Scroll down. They all go up on the YouTube. So that will be your Oki. Either down back two for your mid, 
that is grounded or back four off of this throw. Now for the one plus three throw, he recovers too bad. Like his, his recovery is too shitty to really get a solid mix up out of that. So I wouldn't like, I would recommend if you're gonna get aggressive, get aggressive with down back two, because at least it'll be it'll beat out the low. But keep in mind that you open yourself up to the mid for sure. Um, what other throws we got? This one throws them away. So you're not gonna get shit off of that. The two throw, you're not gonna get shit because you're, you're on the floor too. So you get, you're not gonna get anything. Um, this knocks him away. This knocks him away. Uh, uh, this knocks him away. If you don't fuck it up. Okay. All right, ultimate tackle. Let's figure out how to break this shit. So you gotta mash. So one plus two mash breaks it like that. I think if you hit one and then one plus two, you can turn it around, but I don't know if that's universal. That counts for the running one too, by the way. You have to be really, really quick, though. This is who wants to do it? No. Oh, no, no. So either just one plus two in general to break it, or one. It's a mashing one plus two to get the reversal. Like that. I tried to get there reverse, I got it a bunch of times and now all of a sudden he's not doing it, it's weird. Hmm. You think it's just two to push him away? Oh, it's just two. Okay. Okay, there we go. Gotcha, gotcha. I had it backwards. You know where I learned how to do this? Back in the Tekken 5 DR days, Sparrow Jin was training a dude named Liquid. You've seen Liquid in New York City streams? And I was standing there overhearing him explain how to break this. And he explained it as one plus two, then just mash one or two afterwards. That's, <laughs> that's why I thought it was like that. All right. So you kind of just mash one plus two in general, depending on the timing, I guess. I can't get the reversal anymore, though. Whatever. Breaking. So anyway. If he gets a successful one... So this is pretty generic stuff. To break, uh, what ends up happening when anyone tackles you, the first three, uh, if the first punch connects, the second two are guaranteed, regardless of which one they do. And then if they go for the last two punches, you get a second chance to guess. And what it is, is if they pick up their right, you press one, your left. If they pick up their left, you press two, you're right. And uh, that's the generic style. Like, you're not reacting, you're guessing. So, But that's how you counter it, right? So in this instance, he's going right. So if I mash one, you break it. But if I were to mash two, you guessed wrong. Simple, right? There's a way to uh, also counter that arm breaker in the end. I don't, know, remember, I don't remember it, though. There it is. One plus two. And then he, you can reverse it like that too. I don't know if that's universal, if that's a Paul thing, but other characters just get out of it. Yeah, one plus two counters it. I don't know. Let me try mashing one and see what happens. Oh, let me try mashing two and see what happens. Okay, so it's just one plus two. I guess Paul counters it instead of uh, getting out of it. What's up, Psycho? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I saw it, I saw it, relax. <laughs> when you hit the ground, that's the counter. Yeah. So this, he's starting, what is he doing? Here? So in this one, he's doing all five hits, right? One, two, three, four. No, he's doing four hits. I thought it was five. Maybe it's his paw. Whatever, but you see, I'm able to get out of it after the three punches. Now, ultimate, ultimate punishment is unique to Paul. I don't know how to get out of this. I don't know how to do it either. It starts with a two punch. So it seems like regardless, Paul always starts with a two punch. I don't think he gets the arm breaker if he starts with a one. Like, uh... You do. So, uh, weird. You can just hit one, 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 one. <laughs> you can totally hit two, 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 two. You can hit one, one, two, arm breaker. Doesn't matter. So, oh, so if you land the first punch, ultimate punishment comes out. Interesting. Gotcha. So if Paul tackles you like that, you're gonna want to break with one. <laughs> Just eat the rest of it otherwise, and guess the uh, third after the third hit. If you guess wrong in, on the initial hit. Yeah. Yeah. Man, it is, it is, you gotta react pretty fast, but it is just one plus two. Depending on your timing, if you get lucky, you'll get the just frame reversal, I guess. Like, right when your ass hits the floor, you hit one plus two, you reverse it. That's how that works. No, there's no real tracking. If you're not too late, see, that happens if you're late, but... If Paul reversals, you can still get the reversal armbar. So you could, like, you could keep reversing armbars back and forth. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a wrap for Paul. Yeah, yep, yep. Come on, Nook! That shit hurts. If you don't break that shit. As you see, like I just showed you there, the uh, the low knocked him down because he was close enough to get clean hit by. So, keep that in mind. That's pretty much it for Paul, y'all. Uh, when you reversal the tackle and go for the armbar, you can reverse it. Oh, yeah, so it's just back and forth reversals. Yeah. I miss Marduk. <laughs> right, so that's it for Paul. I'm gonna upload this, but uh, I haven't uploaded part one to YouTube yet. They're both gonna be uploaded to the YouTube. For those of you who don't know, I've done a lot of these characters so far, so I've gone through uh, just 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 to give you guys a heads up. I've gone through all of the new characters except for Akuma. Welcome to the King of I've gone through all the new characters except for Akuma. Uh, I've gone through Leo, I've gone through Elisa, I've gone through Huarang, Steve, now Paul, uh, uh, Asuka, I went through her stuff, I did one for Jin, Mina, Lee, yeah, so I've done all that, that's all up on my YouTube, so I think I'm about, I'm at about half the cast now, right? 
About? Yeah, I think I'm about half the cast. Who is going to be next? I'm guessing... Thinking between Lars and King are gonna be next. Uh, I'm gonna try to edit together something in Photoshop to, like, put a fancy little thumbnail with my videos now, so it's not just me looking like a derp. Like, uh... Because I think that'll attract more people to click on. That, that's the, that's the, uh, the tech, right? Yeah, I gotta put... Beginner to master in this one video, right? I gotta put 1080p slash 60, right? And then I gotta put Paul tutorial, right? Beginner to master, Paul tutorial, and then I'll get all the clicks, right? That's how it goes. But then people will see it's like a 10 hour video and they're gonna run away. Because fuck learning in depth, right? <laughs> we need to learn top 10 moves and not how to use them. We just need to know what the good shit is. Top 10 ways to make Akuma smile. <laughs> make Akuma smile like this. Like that. Ten, top 10 things you didn't know about Paul Phoenix. So yeah, uh, I'm done. I don't know if I'm done with streaming, but I'm